In this video, I'll be working through question one of the level three 2017 electricity exam. Question one. Thomas's car has an interior light that turns on when a door is opened. When the door closes, there is a time delay before the light turns off. This time delay is determined by one constant of the resistor capacitor circuit. Describe, describe what is meant by the time constant. So I'll just write that out and then we'll discuss. Right, so what I've said is the time, well, what is meant by the time constant, the time it takes for the voltage across the capacitor to decrease by 63%. Um, I've written the formula here, for, I'm pretty sure, off, off memory, that's the formula. So this is your voltage at any given time. Um, that's the original voltage, and it's an exponential function, exponential function, uh, and it's negative, so that means it's decreasing. And just that tower there is the, um, that's the time constant which is in your formula sheet, which we'll be using soon. All right, the diagram below shows an RC circuit. The capacitor is initially uncharged. After the switch is closed, the battery supplies so 0 0.7, oh no, yeah, 0 0.72 millijoules of energy, or 7.2 times 10 negative 4. Calculate the energy stored in the capacitor, capacitor when it is fully charged. So in your formula sheet, if we have a look, we have E equals half QV, so we'll write that in there equals half QV, but we don't have um, how much charge is on the plate when it's fully charged. We do have the capacitance and we do have the voltage across the um, plate. So when this is fully charged, it'll be 12 volts across the plate because it'll match the supply. So in your formula sheet as well, you have, we'll just show you there, Q equals CV, so we're gonna substitute that in. So we're gonna have E is equal to half CV for the Q, and then because there's another V there, it's going to be V squared. And now it's simply, simply just plug and chug. So we plug in the numbers 0 0.5, which is a half times 5, um, times 10 to the negative 6, and it's microfarad, uh, microfarads um, times 12 squared, and that'll give me what does that give me? 3.60, 3SF, 3SF, 3SF. So my answer needs to be in 3SF. Um, times, what is it, times 10 to the negative 4 joules. There we go. All right, explain why this energy stored in the capacitor is less than the energy stored by the supply battery. So that is less than that. So why is that? So we just, I'll tell you the basic answer, but then we'll discuss the advanced answer. So I'll write it down. Right, so what I've said is energy is lost in the form of heat due to resistance. That's sort of the simple answer, but there's an even more conceptual answer to that. Say you have two parallel plate capacitors, like so, and we have a switch here, and we have this, this joined, and or let's pretend there's a switch here as well. We we'll switch here, switch here, they're both open. If you charge this up to five volts, and let's say this is, cooled to one degrees Kelvin. So any metal cooled to one degrees Kelvin um, will be a superconductor, so it'll have no internal resistance whatsoever. If you close this switch and close this switch, you will still lose energy charging this capacitor. So whatever energy is stored on this, you'll lose it on the way because when the electrons start flowing, they generate an electromagnetic field. That electromagnetic field 
radiates energy away. So no matter what, you can't ever charge a capacitor without losing energy somehow. Right, next question. Can we see that? Draw a graph of the circuit. Current against time for 15 seconds after the switch is closed. Data points should include the initial current and the current after one time constant. Um, we'll do every time the, the current for every time constant just because why not? So first and foremost, it should look roughly like that. It's a decay graph. It's going to look something like that. So let's figure out what the time constant is to begin with. So on our formula sheet, we have where is it? Where is time constant? Can't even find it. There it is over there. T equals or oh, tau, Greek letter tau equals R C. So funny looking tau R C. That's going to be equal to eight times ten to the five, which is over here. There it is. Times um, five millifarads, microfarads, ten to the negative six, which equals four seconds. So in other words, when we see that, here we can, one, two, three, four. There's four, that's one, I should put one time constant. And then eight is the next time constant. So that's two tau, there's four, eight, and what's four, eight, 12, it's the next one. Because eight plus four is 12. That's three time constants. And then 16 is four time constants. Right, so these points, or when it should, after after one time constant, the current should decrease by 63%. So we need to find out what our max current is. And that is not particularly difficult because it is just the instant the switch is closed, opened, closed. After it says it's closed here, yeah. after it is closed, the uh, current's maximum. So V over R, which equals 12 over, over what's the resistance? 8 times 10 to the 5. Times 10 to the 5, the current is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Oh, look at that. It matches perfectly with the graph. Uh, and that is amps, A for amps. Um, so it's going to start here at 1.5. Notice the uh, the units along the side is times 10 to the negative 5. So it starts at 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. That's the maximum current. Now what we need to do is, after every time constant, so T1, I'm going to times this number by 0.37. So each time I'm going to times it by 0.37, so I'm going to reduce it by 63%. So at T1, this number, 1.5 times 0.37, gives me 5.55 times 10 to the negative 6. Ooh, I should really make that 0 0.55, um, but just whatever. I'll make the next one correct. So times this number again, so I want to times this new current number by 0.37, that'll give me 0 0.2 um, 05 times 10 to the negative 5. I'll try and keep it a negative 5 the whole way through. Um, T3, so I'm going to times this number by 0 0.37, so I'm going to get reduce this by 63%. That is going to give me 0 0.07 times 10 to the negative 5. And I'm going to times the same again. We go this times point, so I'll show you here, times 0 0.37 on your calculator. And that gives me 0 0.02 times 10 to the negative 5. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these. And I'll start from the bottom and work my way backwards. So 0 0.02 here would be 0 0.1. So 0 0.02 over here would be right there. Can we see that? Yep. Um, three time constants at 0 0.07. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 7 in the middle there. Can we see that? Should be able to. Um, second time constant at 0 0.2. So we need to go here. We need to go 0 0.2. Oh, it's close enough. 0 0.2. Because this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, the first time constant, that should be 0.55, so we need to go to here, we go 0.55, which is roughly about here. And then all we do is we flip our paper around, and we follow, join the dots.
Look at that, and it's a perfect exponential. Right. That has answered that. Right, next question. I'll write the answer and then I'll just discuss. Right, so what I have said is, initially there's no voltage across, across the uh, capacitor, so... So... What I've said is, and we'll, I'll go through the question again, explain why the graph is the shape you have drawn. So I've said, initially there is no voltage across the capacitor, so that's just when the when the switch is just closed, there's no voltage across the capacitor whatsoever. So I've said, initially there is no voltage across the capacitor, so the maximum current is able to flow. As charges build up on the plate, on the opposite plate, um, this causes a voltage to oppose the supply voltage, as the net voltage in the circuit decreases, the current decreases exponentially until the net voltage is zero and the capacitor matches the supply. So what I mean by the net voltage is here you have your battery. This is the positive side. Positive charges build up on this plate here. So then this, this becomes essentially a battery, sort of, but it's facing the other way. So what happens is eventually there is, there is a, a voltage that builds up on the plate that continually matches the supply, so you have two positives pointing in the same direction, so the total voltage in the circuit eventually gets to zero. Question D. The time constant for the RC circuit can be changed by adding a second capacitor as shown. Below, here we go, so I'm going to add two capacitors. Explain how this affects the time taken for the capacitor to charge up. So, in parallel, um, I will just write the answer and then I'll discuss it.
Right, so what I've said is in parallel, the total capacitance is just C1 plus C2. So you just add them together like you would with uh, resistors in series. Um, the time constant is equal to the resistance times capacitance. So as the capacitance has increased, because we've added another plate, so the total one should increase, um, the time constant will decrease as described by tau equals RC. So time constant equals resistance times capacitance. This will increase the time for the capacitor to charge up.